I did not have sexual relations with that woman. Yes or no, did you ever take banned substances to enhance your cycling performance? Yes. I had no prior knowledge of the planned assault on Nancy Kerrigan. I am deeply sorry for my irresponsible and selfish behavior I engaged in. Yo, yo, yo. Welcome back to Oops the Podcast. I'm Julio Gallarotti. I'm joined by Francis Ellis. Francis, how are you doing? Buddy, I am feeling good. You're feeling good. Yeah, I'm ready to rip. Dude, so I had an idea for you. Hmm. Now that you're off on your own yep. and you're doing your own thing, I know the Patreon's starting to rip, which is great. Happy mm-hmm. for you. Thank you. I was thinking though, dude, you might do, you might maximize your output if you started an OnlyFans as well. Ugh, everybody's been telling me this. <laughs> And part of the reason is I have a great name, Only Friends. Oh! <laughs> Only Friends. I mean, dude, it's really simple. You just fucking jerk your pipe a couple of times a week. J my P. J your P. And make them give you a tip or whatever. I think that's how it works. There's like a big pyramid Nobody scheme element to Only Friends. wants to watch me J my P. Yeah, they do. I would have to tap into the gay market, correct? I'm not sure, actually. And... Because nobody wants to, there's no way for me to do some crossover of comedy on there, right? But dude, it doesn't matter. Think, there's so many female comedians yeah. who have OnlyFans. What's the deal are, with Bumblebee dude, things? <laughs> dude, it's it's a parallel path. It's not it's not comedy. You're a comedian, but also a guy who like you can just film yourself peeing out of your like chub, oh. like milk, like chub it up a little. God, who's gonna be like, tip me for that, bro? And then you can do a picture of yourself. Like uh, at some social event, and then take a picture of yourself naked and be like, "Me in the in the streets, mm, me in the sheets." That's not the worst idea. <laughs> a little funny kind of meme thing yes. that is me naked. You naked, you know, and I just really think it'll do well, and it'll be a nice way to give yourself some additional income in yeah. addition to your Patreon. Well, you know what? Um, unfortunately, naked content is. Probably not something that would fly. Our friends, Ricky and Julie, are married. They have a they have a kid who's very cute, whatever. So he's on a soccer team. And this kid, you know, he's like, he's almost, he's not even, he's like two and a half. So they're not old enough to be on a team. So they go to soccer practice and they do drills and it's funny and whatever. So I was like, I want to come. So I went and the coaches are named Coach Strawberry and Coach Banana. So that the kids are easier. It's like, oh, Coach Strawberry, Coach Banana, which is like, that's got to be rough. You're Coach Banana. Like, <laughs> <laughs> being Coach Banana has got to be tough, dude. I'm sorry. Also, I'm, is it so much to ask of a child that they know them as Coach right, Roberts? Right, exactly. Coach Dan? Right. I mean, <laughs> there's so many more. Sil- you've chosen two fruits that each possess four three to four syllables dude totally and so three syllables each like there's this music guy for kids who's called uh ramblin dan Uh they can handle that yeah so anyway coach strawberry coach banana whatever i go to the practice it's funny like their kid was like the the star he's like bigger than everybody like faster than everybody he was like doing really great it was awesome love to see that afterwards i meet up with a friend for lunch while i'm sitting at lunch who walks in coach banana coach banana And dude, I go, Coach Banana, what's up? And he was like, not that pleased. <laughs> oh, God. I was like, Coach Banana, I was like, I was just at the game, the, the practice. And he was like, uh. yeah. He's and like, just like kept it. Like, I'm not Coach Banana dude. to you. <laughs> he Michael. Seemed, he seemed very unhappy about it. But dude, there was, there was like a strong parallel to like running into a clown when he's not performing for children. Yeah, right. And he's all like cynical and angry. And uh-huh. it's just like, Really put a weird taste in my mouth. I was like, yeah. Coach Banana is a fucking dick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fuck Coach Banana, dude. <laughs> I don't know, man. Oh, that's good. Dude, that's when I great. when I came over here the other day, I realized. So, as you guys know, for our two hundredth episode, we had drinks during mm-hmm. the episode. We Couple were drinking White Claws. Claws. Now I bought a you know twelve pack of White Claws, and we only had a couple, so there were some leftovers. As we were running downstairs, I kind of like quickly threw them in Francis's fridge. But I did them in a manner where there's just like white claws now hidden all over Francis's refrigerator. The Easter egg bombed our <laughs> fridge with white claws. I stuffed them in every possible fucking angle. Yeah, he ra- he threw one into the old salad bin. <laughs> we got a whole box of salad and he opened it up and buried a claw in there. 
I mean, dude, props to you guys. You have a lot of fresh produce in your fridge. Yep. You have yep. good stuff in there. Our fridge is full, which is uh, is a great feeling. I love that feeling. Um, but we'll we'll have some of those claws tonight because, uh, you know, you bought them and you deserve... You've been financing the claws a lot lately. Dude, first of all, once claws are transferred from one residence to the other, the original owner of the claws no longer is that so has ownership over the claws any longer. That sounds sound. <laughs> However, one time I went to a friend's apartment. Uh, I'll name them. They're they're our neighbor friends that we love so much, and we went over there for dinner, mm -hmm. and we brought four or five of our beloved main beer company beers, which are, you know, diamonds. They're, they're, they're absolutely, <laughs> cause we, we, you can buy them in, in New York. Now you can buy them in some whole foods, but, but the particular, uh, IPA that we like is the post ride snack. And that's as far as I can tell, you can only find that in Maine at the brewery. And we had lugged, multiple cases of this beer back from Maine when we made the trek back to New York. So we brought a few of those over to their apartment, but they were making these grapefruit margaritas that were absolutely mm, delicious. Jesus. So we opted for those instead, and we left. Um, of course, when we got there, we put the beers in the fridge, and then we didn't take them out of the fridge when we left at the end of the night. So we had basically gifted them five of these cherished beers now do i have any claim to those no like you do but dude it's just it's a weird look when you like go over somewhere with somebody and you guys like drink half the bottle and then you like look at it and you're like and you take it with you i agree you... i agree with that but here's... i get i get the significance of the main beer thing or whatever but like chances are you're gonna be the one who ends up drinking that next time you go over but there. that's the thing that's the thing i know that they like them too which means that i wanted to hang out with them the next night <laughs> to make sure they did not have enough time <laughs> to, to rip them. through all of them by the way all i wanted was one right right right, right? right. if if i had had one of those five beers that i brought over and they're big beers they're like 19 ounce beers um big boys but if you if i had had one and then everyone else had had one and someone else had had one more um that would have been fine that would have been fine there's something about getting a piece of the gift you bring where you feel okay this was a gift well shared but instead it was a gift untouched and then supplied right it felt like i was supplying right. their you refrigerator hang, you hang beer. out with them regularly enough that i guess it wouldn't be that in general, I don't recommend doing no, it. No, you can't do it. It's you not can't a good do idea. It. It's not done. Um, it's a faux pas. Overall, it shouldn't be done. Do you, I have a question. Do you ever like, how often are you just like having one drink on a weeknight? Or two? One yeah, or two. Well, one or two. That's, uh, that, that's at least two, probably two nights of the week. Yeah, right? It's like not that weird. No. The other night I was sitting, uh, we, Hillary and I were sitting in the apartment and we were just like having a chill night. We're watching some old movies. And I decided I'm going to have a glass of wine, which is something I don't usually do. Mm. But anyway, like I sort of opened the glass, I opened the bottle and I start pouring and I start pouring aggressively. So like the sound of the wine coming out of the bottle is more aggressive than usual. Mm. So I just start pouring and I just hear from the other room, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> and I go, what? And she goes, glug, 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 glug. <laughs> <laughs> Good for her. <laughs> Good for her. She's like, are you okay? I'm like, what? Like, I poured myself. A it wasn't, it to, wasn't even that big of a glass of wine. I'm like, are you trying to numb feelings right now? <laughs> I was like, what's your fucking problem? She's like, okay. Glug, glug, glug. She's like, <laughs> this is, this is a very funny thing because she shames you about drinking. And I often shame Sierra about drinking. Really? <laughs> Sometimes. Yeah. But this is the thing, like Hillary will go to drinks with her coworkers and when she comes home and I give her a kiss, I won't be like, oh, you've been drinking. But mm. she does it to me, which is annoying. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, so fucking what? Like, I've why, done that to see why must there be commentary? I did it once. And then she was like, why would you say that to me? And <laughs> I have never done it since. Yeah. I need so to it get... was just something I needed to learn. I needed yes, to be yes. like, ah, that's not something to do. And I don't think that Hillary, and it doesn't sound like necessarily you were either. Like, I don't think she's doing it to like call me out she just likes to commentate she yeah, likes to i think i think that well and i won't speak for her but 
for me, there was definitely a latent passive aggressiveness. Or is it passive aggression? I've never I, known. I think, yeah. I People know, say actually. passive aggressiveness, but I think if... I, passive aggression, it's a, so passive aggression sounds like Sounds much nicer. And, and, and there was a latent uh, sort of underscoring passive aggression to me when my girlfriend came home from a work drinks or like a friend drinks because it was like a Monday and I, I could smell some, some booze on her breath. And the sauce. I was like, oh, you've been drinking, huh? I've been <laughs> tipping back the old cough medicine or whatever. She's Papa's like, don't, cough syrup. Don't greet me that way. And she's absolutely right. Yeah. Um, but the reason that I say that, I think I have a an abiding fear of um marrying someone or dating somebody who ends up becoming addicted Not to cool. substances. You we, start finding vodka under the sink. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because that that's something I fear deeply. Mm. Um, because I know that those things tear relationships apart. And I have a I have a selfish piece of that fear too, which is if um my significant other were to become an alcoholic, obviously we would work through it and hopefully get her uh and by the way, Sarah does not have a drinking problem at all. That's not what I'm implying. Let's just absolve her of that. But Whoever I were with, if they if they're drinking increased, increase, and next thing you know, they're you know taking a bottle of wine in their handbag wherever the hell they're going, um, and we had to confront it, and they went to rehab, and then they became sober. I would feel like I also had to be sober in solidarity, mm-hmm. right? I feel like that's a common thing that if you're married and then one of you is an alcoholic, you can't have booze in the house, mm. and I like you enjoy drinking. Uh, in moderation. I really do. I enjoy a main beer company beer at the end of a rough day. I enjoy a glass of red wine with a piece of meat. Uh, all of that. Yeah. And so... Drinking's a good time. It is. <laughs> it absolutely is. Um, so it's ridiculous of me to assume that just because, you know, a girlfriend of mine came home one night <laughs> and smelled a little bit of booze or whatever that all of a sudden we're on this slippery slope and I better nip it in the bud now. You know, I need to be her sponsor from here on out. That's fucking crazy. <laughs> Not totally. But it is something that I have always feared. And I think it's because obviously there's, you know, there's some alcoholism in my family. Not in my immediate family, but in like, right. you know, some of the longer branches off the family tree. Dude, what do, you, do you have that fear or no? No, because I think that if someone were to fall off the wagon in some negative way, it would be me. So I don't fear, like, Hill seems to be pretty good at like, not even necessarily doing things in moderation, but like waiting for the proper occasion to indulge. Mm. Whereas I'm the more likely one to sort of like randomly turn up on a Tuesday. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm not bad. And like, I'll take breaks from drinking, you know, I'll, but I like to have fun and I'm not afraid to admit it. Like I don't, th- I, mean, I don't have any shame in that, but I don't fear that because I've just never, I feared it in other partners, but with her, there's just like no reason for me. To- Do you fear it for yourself at all? No. You have no fear. That you might increase your consumption to a point where you need to take stock of it. No. I mean, dude, like I loved Adderall and I was able to just cold turkey stop doing it. Like I know that I've never felt like I had a problem with anything ever. Do you feel that you have an addictive personality? No. Not really. Do you think that, and I'm asking you tough questions here. And by Please, the way, dude, I am are, not I'm, inferring I, that I, I think you have a problem at all because I do not. And I, and I am not, and I'm completely fine with these questions because I don't feel defensive. Got it. Do you think that your complete lack of concern is concerning? Concern? It could be. You know, I think that oftentimes people who have a problem don't realize that they have a problem. Right. However, I myself do not feel like I have a problem. In my life, mm-hmm. I've gone through periods where I've thought, my God, I've been drinking too much lately. Mm -hmm. And I look back and take stock on how much I was drinking. And compared to everybody else I knew, it wasn't even close. Interesting. And unfortunately, I don't think that stacking oneself against the most extreme people around you is a good way to get a sense. I think I think people are, you know, function based on their own standards, right? So if you can crush a bottle of wine every night and wake up the next morning and do really well in your work and exercise and sort of stay healthy 
who knows? Maybe that's your pace. I think that's most doctors would say that's too much drinking. But, but they also say that people with substance abuse problems, the last thing to go usually is their work. Yes, because, the whole functioning alcoholic right, thing. Right, like yeah. you convince yourself that your your habit's fine because you're getting your shit done. Right. Until you don't anymore. Yeah, usually for me, it those fears come upon the heels of stringing together, you know, four or five days in a row where I've had alcohol. Right, 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 right. And... Um, a bender, if you will, but but no, because some nights it's only one or one drink, you know, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. then and then yeah, man, I can't, I cannot go more than three nights in a row of partying now, dude. Same, no shot. And if I do, it really sucks after. Yeah, I don't even like it, dude. Like I really value having energy in the day. Yep. And it's funny because once I have that moment where like my day sucks because I got too fucked up. I immediately pump the brakes mm. and re- and reset. Mm-hmm. Um, perhaps right. until next time, perhaps not. But um, I really like. And did, did did I talk about this on the pod? Like I took acid, and did I talk about this? Yeah, you did. I did. Okay, yeah. And like on the acid trip, I realized that I needed. I love drinking, and I don't, I don't want to not drink. And I started drinking. How about that? <laughs> It took an incredibly hard drug <laughs> to unlock Julio's willingness to go back on the sauce. Back on the sauce. Indeed. I don't think that many people have that. I feel like that's not the way. The, Dude, what yeah. this, the key that uh, LSD you know unlocks or turns doesn't typically lead people back to a life of <laughs> of partying. As but- Ricky said, you went, you took acid to find something, and you found tequila. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a pretty fucking good line. That's good, man. That's very good. Dude, let me ask you a question. Do you have any inside jokes with your girlfriend that you're not sure if people would think are funny or not? Totally. Do you have an example of one? Boy, I knew you were going to ask me that, and I was immediately sifting through (laughs) the folders of my brain (laughs) to try to think of what our inside jokes are. And it's proving elusive at this this moment. So if you've got one, lead us off, and I'll keep thinking. Okay, so we we will have some come and go. And I'm thinking of this one because it's kind of popped up recently, and I've been laughing a lot about it, but I don't know if it's going to... You guys are probably just going to think it's weird. And I've kind of been thinking about that. I'm like, well, people think this is funny or is it just stupid? It's pro- I don't know. All right. Anyway, so this is the joke. So I really, am, I'm a big Bad Bunny fan. So I was listening. And I'm always listening to Bad Bunny in the apartment. And this line comes on where he's like, mucha labia, mucha, whatever. And I was like, labia? I was like, is he talking about labia? And Hillary was like, no, uh, labia, or labia in Spanish means lips. Not like those lips, you know what I mean? Not vagina lips. And I was like, oh, so like, wh- I wonder what, what, what labia is in Spanish. She goes, what is labia in Spanish? And I go, I know what it is. <laughs> and I just started trotting. <laughs> Wait, what? Why? Because labia in Spanish is. <laughs> it is it? No. <laughs> Wait, it's just I don't know where that. Ca- See, it's weird. So you were fuck, acting. You were acting out in just in a thought in your brain. <laughs> the motion that would accompany, yes. as if for some reason in Spanish you don't say the word labia, you trot. It instead. was as if you were sign languaging it. Exactly, but that okay. somehow in real language that is what it is, and now that's become an. And she thought it was funny. We've been laughing a lot about it, and it's I'm pretty like, funny. It's dude, funny. No. If I had seen you do it, I would have laughed. Maybe I would have laughed my ass off. <laughs> perhaps, I know that I would perhaps, have. Perhaps, but it's okay. You don't have to make me feel. No, no, no. But that I, is... I was wondering whether or not this was something I wanted. Well, to people up. say, you know, when people do that bullshit fucking thing where they're like, "You had to be there," I get, or they're like, "I guess you had to be there," and it's like, "Well, you kind of did. You did." And but... if you had been there, you would have found it funny. Potentially true, but I didn't do that though. That that is suggesting that you should have laughed by saying you had to be there. I'm not suggesting you should have laughed. I'm, I'm wondering. saying I wish I had been there so I could have <laughs> laughed or with the original laugh and then been part of the triangle of the inside <laughs> joke. You, me, Hillary, not Sierra. She never would have gotten it. <laughs> That's great, dude. That's just so I'm trying great. to think of, of inside jokes that we have. Um, Oh man! Well, you know, there's a lot of stuff that that around the dog, but that yours was so specific. <laughs> it's just so fucking weird. Yours was so specific. I like feel uncomfortable now. <laughs> mm, don't. I get that. I understand that. Sharing one's, you know, 
funny-isms that you have that are singular to your relationship is a very revealing and vulnerable thing to do. Yeah, the and only thing that's worse, it. I appreciate it. The only thing that's more uncomfortable, which I would never do, is like baby talk, like sharing Oh, that. God. Yeah, your pet names. Yeah. I yeah. thought you were going to say, by the way, your like sexual preferences with each other. Oh, wow. Well. Which is, you know, deeply personal. And that's just like weird. Like that's like a, I guess those are both weird things to share. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay well let's change gears here dude do you, how do you deal with when you're in a store and they ask you if you want to donate to the march of dimes like a dollar like you know when you're in cvs like do you want to donate a dollar today to children in eritrea or whatever i say no you say do you feel bad no you don't say uh next time not or not this time to imply that you will next time. You no. just straight up say no. I say no. <laughs> Do you ever give the dollar? No. Now, but let's remember Francis is a very charitable person in general. Exactly. We've, on this podcast, we've seen him hand twenty dollars to the man with the broken glass. That's it. And among other things, here's my reason. Right? <laughs> How much do I trust the clerk at CVS to allocate my dollar? Towards some properly good charitable cause. Dude, it's not up to the clerk. The, the, Fine. Literally, it's in the. They in round the it up, whatever. All of that. Do you? I mean, dude, I'd rather save all of those dollars that I might give and give some lump sum to a cause that I truly believe in, where I know the process, I know the people, I understand the mission, I know where that money is going. Mm -hmm. Charity is. You know, a lot of them are, are poorly run and there are there are rating systems that rate the charities, mm -hmm. right? And some charities get high, high, high rankings and because, you know, they've been it's like it's like um when restaurants get the no, I was gonna say like oh, the, the sanitation health, yeah, yeah, yeah. health and safety ratings, like an A restaurants you, you wanna eat there, B one you're like, there are mice in the food. Um <laughs> And and the same is true of charities. I think there are some that like are are really done by the book and have you know the salaries of the employees are not inflated or it, there's just the money's not like carelessly tossed around, um, and it's accounted for. And then there are others that suck. And and I want to give my money that I'm donating to the best charities, the best run charities possible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In addition, hoping that it matches up with a cause that I believe in, right? right. And for me, that's typically education. Mm -hmm. um, I I tend to that's where I believe, you know, in in donating education um, more than necessarily like I don't know animals. Obviously, I believe in too, but but I think education is where the biggest differences are going to be made. Um, anyway, good, what about you? Uh, no, I usually just. It depends how I'm feeling that day. Like I really, it, it's amazing how differently I'll deal with situations depending on the day. Like some days I'm really tough. Other days I'm a pussy. Some days I'm confrontational. Some days I will avoid confrontation like the plague. Like I, it's weird. Mm. So I'm such a Gemini. <laughs> 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 but, but on those situations, I typically will say not today. Mm. Um, however, you know, they, they set it up in a good, in a way that like guilt you the same way that like, you know the places that have the cash register that like swivels around and it's on an iPad and it asks you to leave a tip? Yes. And therefore you're like, you feel bad saying no. So like maybe some days I'll leave a dollar. Some days I'm just like, whatever. I know people who void the transaction when they do that. Oh my I'm like, God. you fucking scammer. They turn around and they like go into the admin thing and void the transaction and spin it back around. Some scammer shit. Wait, I don't understand. Okay, the, so the people who work at the coffee shop. No, so when you're working at the coffee shop, say I'm the guy behind the counter and you're Francis right there. Oh my god! I, I get say okay, going that's now. it, and you spin it around, and you're supposed to sign and leave a tip, but instead of doing that, you click admin, and then you go to void transaction and spin it back around. Who knows the Stripe interface that quickly? <laughs> These fucking scammers, dude. That's incredible. These little scamsters running around. Speaking of coffee, I. In the space of time of the last two minutes, just ran upstairs, <laughs> and I was planning to only get a couple of shots of espresso for you guys to sample, but while I was doing that, I decided, you know what? Sometimes you got to live. Sometimes you need to be an all-American hero, so I made us espresso martinis. Dude, Look how at all fucking of us, romantic, man. Us boys just throwing back a couple of espresso teenies. 
And they are made, of course, with Brooklyn Roasting Company coffee. Yes. I brewed them just now. I just pulled these espresso shots. And if that's not the most delicious espresso martini you've ever had, well, my name's not Francis. <laughs> This is the best mar- espresso martini I've ever had in my life. It's so good. And what a uh, great way to start the fucking night, baby. I used I used the Columbia Tolima blend, which is really nice. Mm. Guys, I'm not kidding you. Brooklyn Roasting Company coffee is the best coffee I've ever had, bar none. I just I just brewed up these espresso martinis. It's absolutely delicious. I love this blend, but I also love the Iris espresso. I also love the BQE espresso. This is coffee. If you like coffee, you're going to love. No joke. Use code OOPSBEANS right now. One word. Go to brooklynroasting.com. You'll get 5% off your first order. Guys, I'll even throw up my espresso martini recipe uh, so that people can make these with their Brooklyn Roasting coffee uh, themselves. So check out brooklynroasting.com. We love them. um, And these are absolutely delicious. Dude, fucking cheers, man. How good is this? Are we are we becoming a drinking podcast? Is this be uh, <laughs> our problem? Is that we record on Friday afternoons quite often, Friday early evenings. So sometimes you just don't have a choice, you know. Dude, it's just fun, man. Mm. This is really I'm really enjoying this, dude. It's funny. I've noticed you and I have something in common that we haven't yet put our finger on. K S. So, <laughs> so that is you like you know you like getting out of the house, right? Mm. Sorry, I'm being confused in the way I'm saying this, but I feel like I need to like go on a long walk every day or I like feel depressed. Mm. And I feel like you, like you need to get a couple of rounds of golf in every week to like not be. Like, Look, yes. We're like Huskies, dude. But, we but, need to be but, walked. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But let me say this. Um, if I lived in the mountains, going on a hike would accomplish the same thing for me. Totally. It, it's not, it doesn't have to be golf. I use golf as my get out of the house thing. And, um, you know, living in New York City and fortunately being a member of an amazing golf course uh, means that I, as somebody who grew up in Maine, (laughs) Julio is chomping on the coffee beans. (laughs) Somebody, It's all good. It's all good. Uh, As somebody who grew up in Maine, you know, in the woods, it it was a pretty shocking uh, change of life to come live here in the brick uh, concrete Jesus Christ. Concrete, Concrete jungle. Jungle. <laughs> and so the golf course is my sanctuary. It's my way of getting that fulfillment. Totally. Did you ever read um short stories when you were growing up in school? Yeah. There was one about a girl. It was a sort of a sci-fi short story about a girl who had they were like living on a planet where it rained for like twelve years straight. Oh jeez. And she had come from a different planet where it didn't rain, but all the kids that she lived with and went to school with had only ever known rain. That's crazy. And there was this one day of school where it was like a, you know, an eclipse and the rain was going to stop and the sun was going to come out for 10 minutes. That's all it was. What a crazy. And the kids, the kids were jealous of the fact that she had ever seen sunshine in her life and they hadn't so as a prank they locked her in a closet for the 10 minute window wow that the sun came out wow and they went out and they celebrated and jumped around in the sunshine and then it started raining again and they came back in and and they had to see it again almost like forgotten that they had locked her in there and they let her out and she was she was broken Oh my God. And it was, I remember, dude, I remember reading this short story. If you've read that short story, l- let us know. Is that right? The Long Rain. The Long Rain. If these were the kinds of short stories that haunted me. Yeah, dude. I have one that haunts me too. Uh, it's from In a Dark, Dark Room. Do you remember that? Was that Poe? Is that Edgar Allan Poe? No, it was like short short kind of like horror stories oh yeah in a dark dark room in a dark dark place yeah blah 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 it was there for kids uh, right 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 and i think maybe there was a few series of them i don't remember there was one where there's this girl who like wore a bandana around her neck and, and like, she had her head would fall off if she took it off I you remember, remember that? that i yeah, do remember that, that one like kind of fucked me up a little bit sure but dude like uh, oh sorry siri <laughs> decided to perk up for that one um but dude, it is funny. Like things like that will really stick with you. 
I remember I was talking about this. Like when you were a kid, when you would sleep over your friend's house, would you ever get scared and like call your parents and they would have to come pick you up? It It's funny that you ask this because when I was in first grade, I did some sleepovers with my friends at their houses and I had no problem. Mm-hmm. And then something happened where, I think it was first grade, maybe it was second grade, whatever. Something happened where in like third grade, all of a sudden, one time, I got scared, called my parents to come pick me up. They did. And then I couldn't sleep over at people's houses for like two years. Interesting. Because I was afraid that that was going to happen again. And I was so embarrassed. Interesting. That I, you know, it was like homesickness yeah. or whatever. Yeah, it's like this weird, acute homesickness. And isn't it funny, too, that as a kid, I remember thinking at like two in the morning, I was lying awake on this shitty air mattress or whatever, <laughs> being like, I hate where I am right now. I want to be home. Yes. I want to be with my family. I want to be in my bed. And, you know, you think in that moment, it's so embarrassing to rouse your friend's parents. You think your parents are going to be mad at you. Your dad comes to pick you up. You're worried that he's uh, judgmental. But that's like wearing he's wearing his slippers still. But you and I both know as fathers like we are. <laughs> We both know that when our kids call us, it makes us feel so good. Yeah, it really We does. happily jump out of bed, throw on some sweatpants, kiss our wives goodnight. I'm going to get Jamie and, and totally. Romeo. And the first thing I say to him when he gets in the car, I say, nobody touched you, right? Yes. And I say, remember, if anybody touches you, you tell me immediately. Okay, right. you don't have to feel weird about it. You tell me. No right. one should be touching you. In a right, way that makes you uncomfortable. Exactly, and you know that conversation <laughs> is is the start of many that creates this strong bond, which of course allows me to you know when my daughter comes to me years later and says that Julio's son Romeo uh, <laughs> disrespected me and is passing my nudes around school, I can then summon you. We meet for some espresso martinis. <laughs> And I say, hey, this is uncomfortable, but your son is disrespecting my daughter. And that's just how it goes. We're dads. We're dads. You know, these are the things we do for our kids. Dude, so I remember, like, I always used to sleep over my friend Ryan's house. And Ryan was my next door neighbor. And actually, we kind of became really good friends in this sort of dramatic fashion. He moved in next door and he ran over and knocked on our door. And he said to my mom, can I play with my new friend? I guess he had heard that there was a kid who was his age living in the house next door. But pretty became... forward by Ryan. I know, I know. <laughs> Fucking Ryan. Fucking buy me a drink first. He had Ryan. sauce on his face. And dude, we we sort of told this story for our entire childhood. He rode this green bike over. He had sauce on him, on his face. Well, one of those kids. And then, you know, we've been, mouth. we've been great friends ever since. We're still very good friends. Um, mm. And we had all these fun, so many funny things happened with Ryan. Like, I didn't know what sex was. And he was like, have you had sex? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> and we must have been seven. And then Ryan went around telling everybody that I had had sex. Oh my God. And I was like pretty proud of it, but I still didn't really understand what it was. Like, you know, that was, he, he was just that friend. Then like, dude, I'd sleep over his house and get homesick and my house was 80 feet away uh, and I would go home. Would you walk home? Yes. By I, yourself? Yeah. I would just walk home. Um, well, that's pretty nice. Well, and it's funny. Like the darkness didn't like scare me like that back then. Like my friend Charlie lived all the way down the road and we'd walk to his house. There was like no street lights, probably like the same in Maine. I don't know. The, the like pitch darkness would uh, scare me more as an adult than it did. Interesting. Interesting. That was kind of a side thought. Well, no, but I mean, you know, it all comes full circle, interestingly, which is to say that, you know, you I, I went through that period of being very afraid that if I went to sleep over at some friend's house, I would get homesick and right. need to call my parents. And that was too humiliating. So I'd rather just, I can't sleep over right. at people's places. You like preemptively decide. So that, I right? was the kid who, when our group of friends had planned a sleepover, I would say that I had to leave at like 8.30. Right, right. Because I had a basketball Lacrosse game practice, or something. Yeah. And they'd be like, dude, what? Yeah, dude, and that's... Like, Court the... time is hard to come by in my league. The lie is funny. Yeah, yeah. and then I, they'd pick me up. And, and, you know, and finally, somehow, I broke the spell and I got over it and I was able to sleep over and everything was fine. And then you go through this period of your life for a decade or so where you can sleep on a fucking <laughs> box. Yeah. <laughs> you can sleep on the f- hardwood floor totally. anywhere in a bathtub, totally. right? And now I'm back exactly yeah, where I, I was when I was in fourth grade. I circle. hate sleeping anywhere other than my bed. 
I hate it. I don't want. I don't even like hotels. Dude, it's so dude. It's so funny. It's such a good point, man. I don't know. Like, it I all have, comes full circle. So it's man. funny too because like I really was a big go home from the sleepover guy. Like when I was young. Like I remember when I was at Ryan's. So Ryan's parents were divorced, and I slept at his mom's house once. And then his stepdad Bill was up there, and I like we watched X Files, and it was this episode oh, where yep. this girl is connected somehow to this other person. Like I don't know if they're twins or something, and like one of the people is kidnapped. And like that fucked me up so hard, this sure. kidnapping episode. And I went in Bill's room crying, like Bill and hit Ryan's mom, presumably. Bill got up and like chilled with me downstairs for a bit, but I think my parents ended up coming over inevitably. Yeah. Um, and that was rough. But like you said, it's funny, I guess in a different way. It hasn't exactly come full circle. For this particular situation, it's quite the opposite because now clearly being kidnapped is no longer a fear of mine at all. Yeah. Since, yeah, you know, yeah, I'm yeah. gallivanting all over these places where they say that happens to you. So, Dude, that, know, what you said, though, made me remi- remember that. <laughs> and this is something I had never thought of until we just had this conversation. <laughs> but that, uh, you know, growing up in Maine, I had friends. <sighs> Maine is such a spread out rural state that a, a 35 minute drive is close. Right, right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. I didn't have neighbors. We all right. lived in the woods. Right. Um, and the point is we, I had friends who lived in like the next town over and my parents would be like, yeah, you can go sleep over there. But if I wanted to go sleep over at Ben's house in Cape Elizabeth, which was like 40 minutes away, they'd be like, eh, you sure? <laughs> Because they didn't want to drive at 2 in the morning, 45 minutes to come get me. And they had no faith that I was going to make it through the night. And the last piece I'll say about childhood sleepovers, there was someone, a friend of ours, and I cannot remember who it was, a comedian, tweeted this recently. It might have been Sam Marill, it might have been J.P. McDade, and it might have been Matthew Broussard. And it might not have been any of them. (laughs) But it was one of those types of people on Instagram tweeted like, Childhood sleepovers were where you really figured out how weird other families were. Right. Like, good night, guys. Okay, uh, sleep tight. And don't forget to put on your, you know, hula hoop that we do in this family. Like, whatever it was. I had a friend, my friend Ben, who his mom, before we went to bed, would bring up glasses of orange juice for us. To, to have as our like nighttime beverage. What the fuck? In case we got thirsty in the middle of the night. And I was like, yo, this is dope. <laughs> like, I only ever get water. And I <laughs> told my mom the next day, I was like, mom, why don't you let me have orange juice at my bedside table? And she was like, are you fucking kidding? <laughs> because it's sugar. Yeah. <laughs> like, do you really want pulpy orange juice in the middle of the night after you've brushed your teeth? And I do remember thinking, my God. This tastes absolutely horrific after oh, right. brushing after your teeth. Brushing the once teeth. you get halfway through the glass at three in the morning, oh my God. you get past the whole. Uh... <laughs> but dude, you're right. There are those things where you look back, you're like, oh, that was weird. Like, I remember one time my friend's dad came downstairs and he was like, all right, guys, well, you have fun. Me and your stepmom are going are gonna to go upstairs and kiss and hug. What? You guys have fun now. I was just, I think back and I'm like, is he telling us he's about to bang my mom? Yeah, it's like <laughs> what a like unnecessary, like kind of an overshare. I was kind of like, oh, that's fucking. You s- yeah. How old were you when that happened? Young dude, must have been ten. Yeah, nine. Mm. And then another time, I remember a friend's parent was drinking and driving while they were driving us to the movies. No way. And I accidentally told my parents that, and my parents like acknowledged it, and then like wouldn't let me drive with them anymore. I was like, yeah, like I I saw like Rolling Rock in the grocery store. I was like oh, we should get some of those waters. And they're like, those aren't waters. And I was like, yeah, like so-and-so's mom was drinking it while they were driving us. Boy, you really connected the snitch. (laughs) Innocently (laughs) snitching on my boy's mom. Yeah, you really connected some dots for that snitch. (laughs) That's amazing. Yeah, dude. Pretty fucking awesome. Um, Um, Yeah, if you guys have any like weird sleepover stories, preferably not ones that end in like any kind of sexual assault. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Any sort of like, Innocent sleepover stories, please share. Well, how that. sad is it that <laughs> when you said that the dad, the stepdad came downstairs, I immediately thought you were going to be like, he, you know, he was like, hey, will you guys come check out this mole on my penis? 
<laughs> like, why is it? I'm worried about it. Why don't you all gather around and give it a good close look? <laughs> You know when you just get rock hard and you have to relieve it? No. Well, let me show you. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, um, man. Hopefully nothing like that. Yeah. Um, okay, dude. So this is an email. And honestly, in my opinion, I'm surprised at how often we receive this kind of email. Okay. Okay. So here we go. And I think that maybe we can. This, it's, it's actually a tough question, too. All right. I'll, I'll say no more. Not necessarily an oops, but I know that you guys are relatively liberal with what you explore on the pod. Was wondering if you guys could explore how to make friends in a big city that is just beginning to open up, but you know practically no one. I'm a student who has just transferred to a school in Southern California, but I don't know anyone at the school. I'm a decent commute from the campus, 20 minutes. It's really hard to develop tangible relationships over Zoom classes, and the Zoom clubs are now more of an academic task than they are a social event. After a year online and about one Snapchat friend made, mm. I think it's time to take matters into my own hands outside of school. Hearing both of you talk makes me think that you are both experts on meeting new people and putting yourselves out there. Thanks a lot, guys. Your content has really changed my year for the better. Is this a girl or a guy? This is a guy. Got it. I have to say, I, I, uh, do you think it's harder for guys to make new guy friends or for girls to make new girlfriends? I have no idea, honestly. I have no fucking idea. It's hard to say. There was a part of me that thought uh, I was going to say that it, it's definitely harder for men to make new guy friends because men are very afraid of intimacy, as we've talked about before. Right. And there's this thing of like, do I have I, you get to a certain point in your life where you're like, uh, it would be weird for me to get close to a new guy. Right. I mean, there, dude, totally. I think that there's the obvious answer, which is join a fraternity. I this this question is more difficult during this period of time that he's been going through. Mm. Now that things are starting to open up, in theory, it could be easier. So there's the social club angle, which he explores a bit. There's the fraternity angle. There's kind of getting involved in school things. Mm -hmm. That Those are obvious things. Yeah. I honestly believe, and tell me what you think about this, it's hard to sort of like tangibly be like, do this, this, and this, you will make friends. And quite frankly, by doing that, by giving, by putting too much of like an academic approach on meeting people, you become a weirdo. Yeah, totally. If you're like, on Tuesday and Wednesday nights, I will do this. Like, as long as your mind is in the place of, I want to meet new people, if as long as you have that there and you're willing to put yourself out there, I think that it just sort of happens gradually. I completely agree with that. I think that if you look at all of the sort of groups, unfortunately, that are meant to help people forge friendships, whether it's like, wreck softball leagues or right. you know uh meetup groups mm -hmm. or like storytelling open mics all of that stuff depending on who you are you know you might find that the friendships you make in those places are are forced mm -hmm. uh and contrived and that the people you're encountering are all just like desperate for friendship mm -hmm. and and maybe that's that's enough to tide you over until you find a more like natural and lasting bond with somebody but in general, um, you know, I think I think you need to just put yourself in social situations. Friendships are just the same as dating, right? All the best new friendships that I have found have come as a result of my current friends introducing yes. me yes. to one of their friends. It's a real nice snowball. Effect. It's almost like working in sales. Yeah. You close a deal and all of a sudden you start closing more. Yeah, more you're deals. like, oh, this guy who's friends with one of my good friends, like, I love this guy. And then all of a sudden you're like, yo, bring that dude around more, you totally. know, or totally. like, let's all go out to a, a boy's dinner uh, or let's like, you know, want to, you want to go to, I got Yankees tickets or like, you want to, let's go golfing together. Does he play golf? And next thing you know, there's an easy way for you to get his phone number and you guys are, you know, off off to the races. Um, totally. And the same thing applies for women, obviously. But um, I, I think that like if you if you that's the best way. Now, our emailer sounds like he is very much on a lonely island, like he may not even have any friends. Yeah, he's far. He's he, I don't think he has any. He's far away from school. Obviously, it's not a very campus centric lifestyle yet. Yeah. Hopefully that will. And I'm sure that once all that stuff kind of gradually is reintroduced, it's going to be easier. But since, you know, the school year's ending, if it has not ended, yeah. Um, apart from like, you know, get a job. Like there's, there's little ways, anything right. that you can do, as long as it's not sitting in your fucking room jerking off, like anything that you do can turn into meeting friends. Totally. And also, here's another thought. You could try to revive old friendships yes. people that you haven't spoken to in many years whether it's high school friends or whatever 
You might find out that someone you knew many years ago whom you haven't spoken to for a while now lives in the same city that you totally. do. Totally. Fucking reconnect with them. That's the whole point of Facebook, isn't it? I don't even Dude, use definitely. Facebook anymore, but that seems like an app, a good use of it. Right. Um, Is there anybody you know who knows anybody that somebody in yeah, that area? You got to have a s start. There's something. Um, and the reason I say old friends is because after you haven't seen someone for many years, people grow up and people get better. And you might find that that kid that you didn't think was that sick in high school is actually kind of a great person now to totally, hang out with. You might totally. have more, more in common. Maybe you both work in tech now. Totally. Whatever it is. Um, Absolutely. I think that's a good thing to do. Trying to forge friendships in the you know dairy aisle at Whole Foods is not really an yeah, option. Yeah, that's hard. You're not going to find some crazy aligning of the stars for friendship the way that people think you know dating happens in rom-coms yeah um i don't think friendships forge that way totally. so That's friend to friend recommendations old reviving old friendships social activities student groups campus yes. activity all of that um whatever. stuff like that yeah that's the way i would uh i would go about it for sure and honestly even dating online dating can lead to friendships you know you talk to these people you can just go in there and be like i'm looking to make new friends whatever that is true it does work they have that uh i think they have an option for that on some of these apps where you can say i'm only looking for friendship i have no idea if that works, if if that's all just some bullshit. Yeah, I think it does. I think it can work. So just keep an open mind. Keep trying. Keep thinking about it. If you keep it in the front of your mind, it will happen. Yeah. Also, you know, people should... Um, <laughs> I'll say this. We had on my Patreon a happy hour last night, and we had about 20 people on there, all of whom... Like alternate side parking Thursday, Pete the Sweep was uh, was my co my guest, and we were bringing people on and asking questions. And these people had a beer and they were hopping on. And I got to tell you, all these people in this group would have been friends. Okay, so if you guys That's like, great. I'm not just piping my or uh, you know trying to pump my own thing. You might find that you both like a, a, a similar band. You might find a friend and I don't I don't want to say like a Reddit forum, but something that's a little less anonymous than that. Um, you know, fan clubs. Is this crazy? No. I mean, any avenue possible. And before you know it, it you won't even be thinking Fans of it. Oops the Podcast would all be friends. That's kind of what I was going for. If there's a way for all you listeners to link up. I, I don't necessarily want to encourage you guys to start your own Reddit about the podcast because... I think there is one already. Oh, God. I don't want to know. No. I don't want to read it because then it starts affecting your choices yes, I'm not on gonna, the mic I don't read it and uh, blah, blah, blah. But needless to say, if you are fans of Oops! The Podcast, find each other, hang out, um, and we'd love to get to know you guys too. So, Awesome. And with friendship. that, yeah. we are Oops! The Podcast. Good luck forging new friendships and... Going out there into the fucking cold world. Um, I am Julio. He is Francis. You can follow us at Oops the Podcast. Send your emails to Oops the Podcast at gmail.com. Follow Francis's Patreon. Subscribe. Do all that good stuff and uh, send us your thoughts. We love you all.